Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's make a fidget with style. We are in Tinkercad, and I love the rounded edges we can get with our tube. All right, real quickly, when you make a spinner, usually your bearings are 22 millimeters in diameter. I use 22.2 for my hole size, and the bearings usually are snug. In Tinkercad, I can set my diameter and wall thickness super easily when I bring in the tool. Here's the math for building the perfect uh, size for your 22 bearing. So I do 22.2 plus the wall thickness twice, and then divide that by 2. Or if I want 4 millimeter thick walls, 22.2 plus 4 plus 4 is 30.2, divide that by 2, and my size is 15.1. I put in my 15.1, I do my wall thickness of 4, I press enter, and my shape, it helps if I actually type it, 15.1 and press enter, and it is the exact right size. I love to make it about 60 so that it's more rounded. I also love the bevel. I'm going to do a bevel of 3 this time. And I want the bevel segments, uh, I'm going to go all the way to the right so it's nice and rounded, which is more fun for you to hold. Today I'm going to make a tri-spinner. Uh, I start by moving so that I've got that on one of the center pegs, uh, one of the center parts of my grid. Then we do control D to duplicate. I like to switch to 5 millimeters because these are 5 millimeter chunks or 10 millimeter chunks. So it takes fewer moves to get over there. And then you just got to decide how you're going to connect it. You could have them just connected to each other, or you could have something um, in between them, which I'm going to add a part in a minute. I'm going to click back on the center one and do Control D again. I'm going to move this one up. And notice because I'm using the arrow keys, it's all uh, doing the 5 millimeters for me so that I'm sure that they're lined up. Once again, click on the middle and do Control D, and I'm doing the clicks to get it, uh, so it's arranged like that. I want the whole project to all be 7 millimeters thick, thick, so if I click on them all, or if I select them all and press 7, they're all the right height. Uh, you could have saved yourself some time and done that initially, so they move to the right size. You could connect these individually. I'm going to connect them all together with a tube. Uh, remember, we were about 15 for the radius of our other one, so I'm going to try 18 for this. I'm going to move it into center, uh, just lining it up to this dot like I did before. So you can see now that I've actually got it touching. I want to raise it up a couple little, uh, a couple millimeters just because I think that'll look cooler. It's going by fives though, so I've got to switch back to one millimeter. And I'm trying to get it in the middle, and I like that. Uh, I need to make it a little wider so that it's got a better connector. So I can just click on it, and I'm going to change it to 19. And I'm going to change the tube. It was 2.5. I'm going to try 3.5. I'm going to try 4 just to see what it looks like. Because of that adjustment, it's a little puffy. So I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to change my idea on uh, whether I want it sliced. And I'm going to go back to 3 because I want to make sure that it doesn't bump when I print. So now it's 1 millimeter off, and it's got 1 millimeter on that space. And it is touching on every side. And then I want to add just another bit of coolness to this. I'm going to cut out part of a polygon. Uh, if I want to use the hexagon, I can, but I think I'm going to switch to a pentagon. And then I want to bring that pentagon so that one of its points is uh, sticking into the middle. So when I switch it to 22 and a half degrees, it's got a nice um, angle. And then I'm going to just do Control D, rotate it two clicks. This is just a little bit of math because I know that the point will be closer to where I want. Let's go one more click, another 22.5. Let's see if I like that. So it ended up being a 90 degree spin. And I'm going to just align those so that they're cutting out half of that um, 
inner ring I made. I'm going to grab both those at once by doing shift click, doing control D. I'm going to flip them around so they're pointing the other way. And I should be able to just nudge them up and they should fit right where I want on the shape to make the same pattern. I'm going to turn these into holes. And then I want to make sure I don't cut up my orange. So I'm going to select all the orange and I'm going to use the awesome hide tool. If you can look closely, the cutout parts are similar except these two look like they could use uh, move in a click. So I'm going to just go one millimeter in. So now I buy these three. This one I'm going to just nudge one on its own. When I select all of that and hit group, I've now got a little bit of fanciness to my design. That's a little thin. I'm going to undo it and go back one millimeter. I'm going to group them again. And then I'm going to show all to bring back the rest of my project. So that is a nifty little spinner that you can then group. And you are ready to send it for printing. Uh, if you're in my class and have taken the time to design one, make sure you share it. Make sure you put it on your Thingiverse. And once you get it on Thingiverse, make sure you take a peek at it. Uh, you can tell about what you did. And then publish it so that it is possible to print. If you have published your cool thing, then make sure you share it. By tweeting it, make sure you use that awesome share button and tweet it at HLModTech and see if you can talk me into printing it. Usually if you have taken time to design it, and you can get your own bearings, I am more than happy to print it. Tell me thanks for training or brag about the cool parts that you added and then tweet that at me so that I know that you want it printed. Have fun, make sure you follow, subscribe, and comment, and keep tinkering.